we have to check ourselves. I have done meditation for an hour. And after a few hours, the mind returns to the same old habit and state. No. That is not what the meditation is. That is not what the Patanjali is saying. That is not what our masters are saying. So that needs to be, once we understand that, then we say, yes, what we will, what this Patanjali is teaching in the next sutra, how it should become a part and parcel of my day-to-day -day life. It is not <laughs> one hour, it is not few hours of sleep or few hours of awake, uh, waking state, no. That state lives in you. That is what the journey of Eastern wisdom is. Do you have any questions, Stephen, David, David, or Kate? Or have you been practicing sharing? Last session, I think, you know, was more very important. Do you have any question you want to share your experiences? I will start in a few minutes. So, so Garish, could I keep reflecting on the image that I saw the last time because um, it keeps like kind of having it in my mind is that a good thing can I ask you what image I saw so I saw like um, <coughs> at the end of it I started to see these prisms kind of come in like rainbow colors like different colors like of light but they weren't it wasn't straight it was like little they were <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. There was there was lines everywhere, but I I keep having moments where I will like go back to it during meditation or just like throughout my day. Is that a good thing to go back to, or should I let it go? Ah, uh, quite interesting. <clears throat> I had an encounter with, uh, or you know, this guy used to come to my sessions. There used to be twenty people in New Jersey. And uh, the way I always ask, can you share your experiences after the end of the session? So he said, I see God. I don't want to name the uh, God, but he used to tell me that I see the God and I communicate with the God. So I told him, that, then why you are coming to meditations? No, I have a lot of stress. I said, why don't you communicate with the God and tell the God to get rid of the stress? all, God is all pervading. Huh? That is what we understand. And why we pray God? To get rid of the stress, to get rid of the suffering, to get more money. So when we study Patanjali, we understand that there are variety of visions and colors and experiences we undergo in meditation what we have to do. So you asked the very right question and that we are going to take up in this uh, in this session. In the in the 17th Sutra. Do you remember what we studied last time? Did, did you reflect on this? Uh, we discussed that existence is our father. And Eastern wisdom, what is Eastern wisdom? It is an instrument of knowledge. Is it the mother? And who is the baby? The baby is the intellect. So the way the mother teaches and educates the baby, come on, why you are putting everything into your mouth? You see, that is what used to happen when we were babies. <laughs> we saw something, <laughs> goes into the mouth. Even sometime we saw the lizard, okay, put it into the mouth. So the Eastern wisdom teaches the intellect like a baby. No, 
you have to put this, you have not to put this. So what happens to the intellect? Intellect goes into the steady wisdom. That intellect lives in the steady wisdom and the steady wisdom plus practice leads to awakening. So now the 17th Sutra, sutra says Vitark Vichar Anand Asmita Anugamat Sampragnata He says one stage of meditation it consists of four stages. So all the four stages is known as Sampragnat. Sampragnat means simply now I am answering Lara. Sampragnat means the meditation with a vision, with an experience, with an object. Whatever you want to say. So it may be with an object, it may be with a vision, it may be with the color. So now the next sutra, I should take up the next sutra in, to, in order to answer that. Virama Pratyaya Abhyasa Purva Sanskar Shesho Nanya. Literal translation is when all the impressions coming from the world outside and also the past impressions present in the mind are totally gone. That is the higher state of meditation. So tell me you want to live into the higher state of meditation or the lower state of meditation. <laughs> if the vision comes, let it come. The vision goes away, let it go. If the God comes in my meditation and they want to communicate, let us communicate and they disappear. Thank you, God. No, I'm only talking of meditation. I'm not talking of religion, dogma, belief in God. <laughs> Thank you, God. Uh, you have come. You have gone. That too is. Thank you. So now we go back to the very first sutra. A seeker only succeeds in meditation. So now we are a seeker. So that seeker knows the five subjective states of the mind. Do you remember? I have repeated many a times. Huh? What is that? Wandering. Huh? That is known as chipta. Second state is murha, the foolishness. Third state is vichipta. So there is a difference between the wandering state of the mind and distracted. When you are practicing meditation and the mind is going somewhere else, then you do not succeed in meditation. That is known as vichipta. And the wandering is general nature of the wandering. You know, mind is wandering. So now relate the sutra to this uh, five subjective five subjective states of the mind. The fourth is fourth is the definition of the fourth is given in the third pada of the samadhi, third pada of the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. What is that? Desh bandhasya chitasya dharana. When the mind is holding on to an object, what object we are holding on? So we are holding a dynamic object in our meditation practices that we are doing. And what is that dynamic object? Mantra. You see that? The mantra. That is how I design and customize the practice of meditation. So go a little deeper. So what exactly the Patanjali is saying? Ah, it's like a story of a woodcutter and a monk. So that woodcutter goes to the fo always goes to the forest, cut the wood, sell it to maintain his livelihood. And one day he went to a monk to seek the blessing. The monk looked into his eyes and said, Walk on. I'm answering in a different way your question, Lara. So walk on. So that woodcutter did not understand. He went to his house, talked to his wife. Wife said, no, perhaps a monk is saying that you go deep into the forest. So woodcutter the next day went deeper into the forest and he found the sandalwood trees. So now he was cutting the sandalwood trees, selling it. 
he became rich. But after a year, you see that? We stuck to one vision, one color, one experience. We want to hold on to that. No exp You cannot hold any experience. You cannot hold any vision. You have to crush the mind. But anyhow, after a year, that woodcutter reminded, reflected on. Monk said that walk on. He did not say you to stop. So he walked on and he found the silver mines. He continued to walk on. He found the gold mines. He continued to walk on. He found the diamond mines. He became the richest guy in his village. And after that, nothing was found. It is the objectless state of the meditation. He found himself. Go back to the third sutra. Tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam. Can you compare you with $10 million lying in the bank? Who is more important? Your happiness coming from inside and all the material riches outside? Now I have understood it. So after doing meditation, my mind goes back again to the same object of the material riches and it holds on to it to secure happiness. That is the cause of ignorance. That is the cause of suffering. So now, going back again to this sutra. So when we go back into this sutra, now that will answer. You have asked many a times during the last one year, what these colors, I see those colors, what that means, what are the visions, what it means, whether I have gone into the deeper. So Master says, what the Master is saying, Master is saying that there are four stages of meditation with an object. First layer, first level of experience is vitarka. Vitarka means that the mind experiences the physical objects during meditation. At the second level, the mind experiences the subtler objects. What are those subtler objects? Can you make out sound, vision, colors? So now you can make out that where you stand for. And the third level is the subtler. You know, sometimes you have told me, I don't want to see. You know, I was full of joy. There was an intense joy coming from within. And you have also told me that is the third level. Subtler. You only experience that joy, that peace, that calmness coming from somewhere else. And the fourth one, sometime you have said, oh, this meditation has passed in a few minutes. Even you have done for such a long. Fourth state. Fourth stays. Now can you categorize instantly? Now you know where you stand. What is very important? Can you make out what is very important out of these four stages of meditation? That your mind experiences say, so they are in, uh, I would say, in ascending order. Physical, the lowest, subtle vision, color, sound, second level, third level is the subtler, the pure, sheer joy, and the fourth level is you, I, uh, I don't want to say anything. I want to remain, you know, it's totally blank. I am, that is the fourth level. You get a glimpse of what I am. Total blankness, but still it is not blankness. Yeah, I think I should bring it uh, in this session or say why it is not. <laughs> so he says that you, you, you get a sense of I am. You are in meditation. Only I am. Not I am Lara, I am Kate, I am David. No, I am. Only I am. No adjective, no object, no person, no personification. I am 
that I am is normally understood as choiceless awareness. But we have, Patanjali says, that is not the end of the journey. You have yet continue the journey, walk on. Like the woodcutter, the monk said, walk on. <laughs> walk on, walk on. So why to walk on? You, have, you will reach to a state which is irreversible. You have returned from meditation and you are still living into the same state. You are living into the same state. And that state is oozing out. What? Peace and happiness, love and the joy. When and where? 24 by 7. Here and now. That is where what the third sutra is saying, tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam. The mind is now settled in my real nature. That real nature is Satchidanand. Keep a smile on the face, need not to think too much. You know, I'm taking you to the journey, you know, step by step. So why do <laughs> be so serious? <coughs> So the first four stages of meditation is known as Samprajnat Samadhi. Now see the beauty and the difference between the religion, dogma, cult, belief and the journey of meditation. It is totally different. God comes into the vision, thank you God. God goes out of the vision, thank you God. We have nothing to do with religion, dogma, belief and cult. Very clear. Patanjali says, be very clear, 100% clear. They come, let them come. They go, let them go. Now, before going into the practice of meditation, we should also understand that what a journey like this. In the first chapter, we are covering the first chapter. The first chapter is for the seeker. And the seeker has already practiced a lot of meditation and then he is studying or she is studying a systematic study of meditation. Why? To bring an end to the suffering once and for all and to awaken to the inner nature, the real nature. So the second sutra, he says, when all the impressions have completely dissolved, destroyed, inherent dis impressions are destroyed, then you reach to the objectless state. In that objectless state, the Patanjali says that is not the end of the journey. Then, then you have two more meditation practices which is known as Sabij Samadhi and Nirbij Samadhi. Sabij meditation, Nirbij meditation, which is also known as Sabitark and Nervitark. After that, no. Is that end of the meditation? No. Then you enter into Dharma Megh Samadhi. Is that the end of the journey? No. Ultimately, you enter into a state what is known as Ritambhara Tatra Pragya. That this mind and the intellect is constantly pulsating with the real nature. What is that real nature? It is the state of pure consciousness, uh, truth, uh, permanent peace, and love in the wisdom. That love, that wisdom constantly coming from inside. When it comes, all the time. You live into that state of the highest consciousness. That is, now is that the end of the meditation? <laughs> then it comes into the fourth pada or fourth chapter of Patanjali. Then Patanjali says when you are living into that, you have variety of experiences. What are those experiences? Don't get carried away by this. I am only taking up briefly. Don't, don't fix your goal like this, what I am going to say. Now. 
otherwise the mind will be destroyed you will not be able to reach to that state let it come naturally so what happens what is the fourth uh, chapter or third chapter yeah third chapter so now there is a natural the mind moves natural way so say for example you want to meditate on time how can you meditate on time should we discuss that now no we have yet to reach to that state so what happens when you meditate on time you can read the thoughts of others isn't it christina is laughing huh? how can i read the thoughts of others so that builds the ego the mind goes outside meditation is moving inside and you destroy yourself so when you meditate on the earth element something more comes when you meditate on air element something more comes now does that should we do it now to demonstrate to show powers to the others the moment you enter into that area of ego everything is destroyed i have seen at least 10 different masters there was a liberty when i was living in india you find those masters who show and demonstrate those powers so only one indian guy is present here but uh, he knows i'm uh, exposing myself so when they used to come to me and they say you know sir i have lot of problem can it be done in a day i said go to that master he know he has all the powers take his blessings at least you know i will be free from that guy it doesn't work in that way never go there 1% truth is there then why i was sending no i want to live in a freedom so i used to send those people my friends and students because you are not a seeker so i used to send them to those masters and they all know what those masters are undergoing when you demonstrate those powers magic they are living a very difficult life he knows so you know i sent him couple of <laughs> masters go take his blessing <laughs> why you are not ready for it so the same thing patanjali says clearly in the third chapter the last thing that i will take up before we start our meditation today so we are talking of the four stages of meditation in this sutra what is before that have we done that no we have not done that so it is very good to know whether we have done it or not so i will pick up couple of the sutras from the third chapter so that we understand from where the journey of meditation starts according to patanjali have i been so serious in talking no i'm just presenting the things huh my indian students will start you know making saying oh you have made me fool no i did not made you fool you are making yourself fool when you are looking for some magic trick power it has nothing to do with it Patanjali also warned it, and every master says, "What is the goal that I must find out my real nature, so that I should live in my real nature, my real self, 
all the time, 24 by 7, so that I can experience pure joy, happiness, love, wisdom, creativity in my personal, professional, social and family lives. Uh, there is some noise coming from outside, it's okay, so let us start our journey of meditation. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, my friends. I told you I'm not a teacher, I'm just a pointer. So, take me casually, but take these principles seriously. Eyes are closed, gently, and you are first looking at the body. First you are looking at the body. Become aware of the body. So when you see the body is steady, the mind is looking inside in the heart, in the space. <coughs> I am just to make yourself aware from the last session. You can access the last session on social media. So look, I am, that I am is the existence. It is not I am the body, mind, intellect, husband, wife, son, daughter. No, nothing of that sort. That I am is the real, pure existence. And when I say I know I am, I know comes from the consciousness, feeling, sensation, knowledge, awareness. All are part of consciousness. So two things will happen. What is existence and consciousness? And third is I know I am happy. That happiness is an extension of existence and consciousness. That is the realization takes place in meditation. So, looking at, looking at the neck joint, let us make it comfortable. We have new uh, friends, so it is better to pick up one or two steps. Look at the neck joint. Physical level is the neck joint. You see the object? What we discussed, I'm translating that into a practice. And then you experience sensation being comfortable and steadiness in the neck joint? Yes. And what is behind and beyond that sensation being comfortable and steadiness? Only the space. So what we are doing, we are merging all the two different uh, types of meditation. In the first type, we have four stages with object. In the fifth, we have no object. So no object, we are taking it as a space. You move casually, understanding the principles clearly and then doing it. Ah, meditation always succeeds. So looking at the shoulder joints, who looks mind, awareness, you know it, that is an object. From an object we moved at the subtler level. We experience sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. And what is behind that? The space. the entire body. The entire body. All the joints, one after the other, when the eyes are closed gently, the mind moves within, with experience of sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. and it is facing inside what it is looking the space so in that state we go for nyasa the many words nyasa sannyasa sannyasa means renunciate 
But here, the real meaning of sannyasa is all round purification of the mind. We are not becoming a monk. So are you in the state of steadiness and comfortable? Start breathing little deep, silent and slow. Means that you are ch you have changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. So check this breath is rhythmic. Check this breath is rhythmic. So breath is our car. I'm using a metaphor to make you understand. The mind is the driver and the highway is the space inside. You see, we take the mind to the objectless state again and again. So how we do it? As you inhale, move the mind inside the right arm, from the shoulder to the fingers. As you exhale, move the mind from the fingertips to the shoulder. Make sure the mind is looking into the space. That space is our highway. So actually we are engaging the mind to at least discover and become aware that there is something like the objectless state. Many things happens. The mind starts enjoying living within, wandering, forgetfulness and distracted state stops. Now move the mind inside the left arm from the shoulder to the fingertips when you inhale or exhale doesn't matter and at the same time experience the steadiness in the body Experience the steadiness in the body. It comes naturally. You need not to force it, my friend. <clears throat> that is the beauty. When the knowledge merges with the step, it leads you to a deeper state instantly. <clears throat> So we are doing, this is, the process is known as Nyasa. <clears throat> and uh, now move the mind inside the right leg. Right leg from the right side of the waist to the toes as you inhale. You know, as you inhale and you move the mind with inhalation, <clears throat> Both support each other. In Hat Yoga, we say, Chale Vate Chalam Chittam Nishchale Nishchalam Bhavet. A beautiful verse. A wonderful principle. When you regulate the mind, the breath is regulated, the prana is regulated. When the, you regulate the prana, the mind is regulated. And here what we are doing? We are using the breath. We are using the mind too. So impact is just the double. And now move the mind inside the left leg. You will find yourself if you are following the step as explained, you may start feeling some sensation tingling in the body. Can I stop? Can I repeat those experiences? No. Recognize them, accept them, and continue.
So in our journey, all every meditation practice is made consist of different steps, leading to different result. Now moving the mind inside the spine from the crown of the head to the tailbone. When you inhale, the mind drops descends down from the crown of the head to the tailbone in the space within. And you may drop mentally sing Om. When the breath returns, the mind moves from the tailbone to the crown of the head, you are saying Om. You have been seeing that I don't use any external means, maybe a sound or something from the outside because the mind will remain outside. It may be absorbed, no doubt. But when we learn meditation according to the teachings of our masters, no outside object should be there. And now leave the step, leave the breath. It doesn't mean the body should me move. You are leaving the step at a mental level. The breath becomes normal. We went a little step ahead with the mantra. And here we will go back. It doesn't mean that you will not progress. So... Singing and listening is the first taste. We have merged last time. So looking deep inside the heart, singing and mentally singing and listening to what you are singing only. The first line of the mantra. Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Mentally you are singing and you are listening to what you are singing. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Now we will go to the second stage singing, listening and the meaning. What is the meaning? Well-being. Can you see well-being? It is subtler. Can I experience that state? Yes. Can we express that well-being everywhere? Yes. Let us do it singing, listening and meaning. Simply focus on the meaning. Whether listening and in your mind in the singing. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu 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 
The literal meaning is, let there be a well-being everywhere. It is a subtler level. Now we see that singing, listening, meaning and the applied wisdom. If the mind constantly, consciously lives in the state of the well-being, you discover something deeper within. Not only in you, but in everyone. So let us, with that feeling, let us do it mentally again. Singing, listening, meaning and knowing. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu 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 <clears throat> We'll take the second mantra. Follow the same sequence. The first stage is singing and the listening. So even if you don't understand the meaning and you do it singing and you are listening to it, Every Sanskrit word is a mantra. It has the sound, it has the vibration, it changes the movement of the prana. Second line. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu In the second stage of the mantra, singing, listening and meaning. Literal meaning is let there be a peace everywhere. Bhavatu should happen. Shanti means peace. Sarvesham, everyone. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu 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 And now the third stage, singing, listening, meaning and applied wisdom. Applied knowledge means what? According to our Eastern wisdom, it says the peace is all pervading, it is always present, deep within us. Similarly, it is present within every being. Why you start looking and discussing about anxiety, duality, depression? Why not peace? You see, the message is clear. Let us do it for a couple of times and see the result by yourself. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu 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 Third line is still deeper. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu. Purnam means a sense of completeness, wholeness. We have to discover a center within us, behind the mind, that is whole, that is one, that is complete in itself. And who is that? My real nature. What is the goal of meditation? Real nature. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu 
Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu You are singing and listening. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu I have already explained the meaning. So six times you sing and you listen to what you are singing mentally. What will happen? You have to raise your awareness to sing yourself. To listen to the noise outside, it's very easy. By default, the ear says, yes, I hear. See the beauty? Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu 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 Now singing, listening, meaning and the applied knowledge. What is applied knowledge? The mind, let the mind go deeper within and find the wholeness, oneness in you. Why? Why? The moment you are at the center of the wholeness, all desires, craving, obsession, anxiety drops by itself. I need not to fight with it. Is that so? Can it happen in one session? I cannot answer. One session. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu 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 Fourth line, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Mangalam means auspicious moment. What is when the auspicious moment? It should be 24 by 7. Let us do it, singing and listening. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. And six times singing, listening with the meaning. Meaning is auspiciousness. So here is the auspicious moment. Can I recognize auspicious moment? How? Leave all the thoughts. That makes us crazy. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu 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 I am doing just to demonstrate. But you are doing with me, that's fine. But you are also singing, listening, meaning. And now the applied movement, applied knowledge. So when the first line, well-being, merges with the peace, and then it merges with the sense of completeness in me, it Every moment in my life becomes auspicious moment. Can you experience stress, anxiety, duality, conflict in an auspicious moment? No. You leave them too far. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu
Did I explain the three subjective states of the mind? One is wandering. You already know. The other is sense of forgetfulness. The mind goes somewhere else, feels sleepy, lazy during the practice of meditation. Third, distraction. So when you are doing the practice step and the mind is still going somewhere and if it is going somewhere, it will move the body. Not only you notice, I will also notice. That is why I say it is always good if you keep your videos open. So now comes the Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So you, we are going to do with, the sig uh, with singing in the mind, listening, meaning and the applied knowledge. What is applied knowledge? Om is symbolically is my real nature. No religion called dogma belief itself. Throw them out from the mind. Second Shanti is for the causal body. So those who do not understand in this session, they simply look into the infinite dark space. They drop Shanti into that. Second Shanti is for the mind, intellect and ego. Third Shanti is for the body and the world. So you have, you're moving the mind from deeper inside to outside. By saying, singing, listening, uh, Om Shanti. Let us start mentally. Shanti, first Shanti to all which I do not know in meditation. Second Shanti is to the mind, intellect and ego. Shanti. Third is to the body and the world. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You are living in mantra. That is more important. Mm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Do it a couple of times yourself. Living in mantra means experiential understanding. I don't want to say evidence approached. That has less to do with the meditation. What a beauty. I appreciate you all. Don't follow the teacher. Follow the Eastern wisdom. Now stop this on Shanti. 
only one om shanti walk down your mind from the crown of the head to the heart within singing mentally om shanti let the shanti take you very deep inside the heart and when you see the mind seems to stop do nothing if it doesn't stop walk down again from the crown of the head to the heart within No, do nothing. Remain as you are. You live in a state of doing nothing. When you live in a state of doing nothing, that I always say is the last step of meditation. What it means? We don't ask the mind to do why. Mindfulness. Knowledge reveals. But that is not the end of it. Once we return in a specific way from this meditation, we will share our experiences, those who want to share, to progress openly, bluntly. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti 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 Bring your mind on the right hand we don't rub our palms in this meditation or in any practice. Why? Because the mind jumps to the body. It doesn't remain within. Bring the mind on the left palm. Feel the sensation. Slowly, gently, raise both your palms. Place it on closed eyes and open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. And now is the time to share your experiences. So, how are you, Stephen? Um, I, I'm, I'm good. Um, peaceful. I could see peaceful. your face, yes. <laughs> um, is it, does it look peaceful? Yes. <laughs> I could see. <laughs> it, it, it was. Um, I, I'd have to say it was. It was a pretty deep meditation. Um, I. It was just. It was quiet. It was fast. Um, it was. I, I heard you. Um, I had no desire to really do anything. I, I. I heard it, and I was there. I was present. 
Um, beautiful. It was, it was great. Beautiful, beautiful. Good. How are you, Sam? Um, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I guess I'd have to describe it similarly. It's just, you know, very effortless. Uh, That's a point. You know, I guess when you realize you're not even, you know, uh, your, your breath is even coming in and out so easily, smoothly with, you know, the environment around you. And yeah, quick, uh, effortless, timeless, all that stuff. So, you see, uh, yeah. that's a beautiful, you see that normally we uh, talk about mindfulness is effortless. If I don't make an effort, if I don't make a journey, how can I reach to the state of effortlessness? No, meditation is effortless, so be lazy. Sleep. That is not. You see, a lot of, so we have a lot of misunderstanding about it. So if I don't practice, I don't change my crazy and the lazy mind, that is what the Sam is explaining, that it was pretty effort, but he has been doing it. That's how you go, got into it. So how are you, David and Jerry? Beautiful. Hello. Hi, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, it was today. It was. Um, it was also quiet. Um, I noticed in the niyasa it used to be a very pinpointed space that I would look into the arms and the legs and now it's a it's more of a vast space um, like a one lane highway now it's a you know eight lane highway uh -huh. and then with the meditation there's just this um, overwhelming feeling of um, during the mantra of, of peace peace and and happiness too. You feel this lightness. I did, and um, I guess that's about it. That's uh, beautiful. One point. Now we will continue to understand uh, whatever the experiences that takes place in the mind with reference to these four stages. So that was the second stage you, we can figure out when you said it's an eight-lane highway. It means more expansion of the mind. And that is the subtler. Huh? You see that, Lara? How are you, Lara? I am good. I also had sort of a similar experience um, with Jerry because the Niasa was just almost felt like these waves going Good. up and down through my body and then um, when you started chanting um, Sarva Sham it, it was actually on the second one the Sham Kier, my body went shoo! Yeah, it yeah. just like brought me like, this, like hit me and brought me more into alignment I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. And so um, yeah, so then I was just with that and that. It was also very quiet and quick. Quiet and slick. So I, yeah, the, the meditations are just they're quick now. It's like quick. Really oh, we spent almost 35, 36 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so That's now you see that gradually we will understand. Once you had the fourth stage of uh, of experience. Uh, out of the four, and one purely what it was a physical level, physical, subtler, and you see that is how we go d deeper and deeper. So I will continue to explain in every session that what happens, how to go into it. So it is not that uh, you are into the first stage and it will take a year to move into the fourth stage. Anyone can jump into the fourth stage. Anyone can remain at the first stage. It depends on the day 
the time and our mental state. How are you, my friend Kate? Now you have to unmute it first. I have muted your... which I don't think I've ever had it happen. At the very end of the very end of the meditation, um, when you asked us to put our hands over our eyes, yes. I saw I saw a very like it was spectacular blue and then it went black and second level. Yes, it was deeper. I'm talking about when we were coming out. So yeah. I just like wanted to stay in the meditation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So these vision and colors... No, what's that? <laughs> vision and colors indicates the mind in a flash went deeper with the vision and these colors. And then it returned again. So yeah, that is... So that is why I always say that you need not to rub because when you rub, the mind is already at the physical level. And in all meditation, I always ask you to do like this. Very good, Kate. Very. How are you, Christina? I always tell younger people, everyone is young, including me, so younger <laughs> people should be doing meditation. <laughs> yeah, um, I was. I love hearing people go first because it. I feel the same thing almost every time in like the slightest way. So peace. I was. I was going to be embarrassed to say peaceful because I felt like that would have been so, like, duh. But that's all I felt the whole time, and because I've been really practicing on letting my thoughts pass because I have really high anxiety, and so I have a racing mind all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I've been focused since been letting those thoughts pass, and so I was able to do that, and I didn't realize I was letting myself do that until I heard you um, om, and I felt myself, like, spiral into, like, a That's good. That's good. Yeah. I loved that, and I was like, oh, I didn't even realize I was letting thoughts pass until I noticed that I was no, it is, yes, center. Yeah. So you see, Lara, second stage, second stage. So that's how we in, instantly understand as we graduate. That's very good, Christina. You have to listen to the talk again and again so that the mind becomes clear. Huh? And then you practice. It will bring a good result. So how are you, my friend, Arnett? Eh, no, Annette. Annette Ruskin. Am I, talk, am I saying right name? Am I speaking the name correctly? Annette Ruskin, you have to unmute it. And then we'll have Terry. I don't hear you. We don't hear you. Even though unmuted, but uh, we will make out you keep speaking, you know, so we'll make out with the movement of your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you try, and in the meantime, we will go to Terry. How are you, Terry? Um, it's a good lesson, and I just want to say that I know that you couldn't see me. I was just moving a little bit. Yeah. But then halfway through, I was just better. Very good. Yeah. Terry, you have to continue. You get the these yeah. audio files. Continue the journey. Continue the journey. So this is what happens. So I just, you know, was talking. So I had, you know, I met almost 100 masters. So there were about 10 different masters. They have acquired certain powers. 1% is true. Out of 100 people, 1%, you know, those who have done a lot of practices, they get these powers. So... I had uh, maybe 100,000 students in India. So when they used to come and I used to see that, oh, he is not a seeker. He wants an instant result. So I said, go to that master. So when they used to go to that master, they were more impressed by them 
then I used to say to them that you have to pay them something out of the respect. Don't pay me. You need not to pay me. So they were convinced that there is a line with the 500 people to seek the blessing from that master. He used to sit in a room, oh, sir, I have a problem. So he used to bless and give something. You go there and it will be. So sometime those students never return to me. I said, I'm very happy with that. What you are looking for is more important in the journey of meditation. Uh, you see, that, that's what, you know, <laughs> so, today I just, you know, it came to my mind and I spoke about it. Do you have any question? So, very good. We'll continue our journey. Yes, next time we will understand the second uh, uh, stage of meditation when we say, what is that objectless state of meditation? So how it happens? What is the knowledge, What is the role of the intellect, the mind and the body into that? That is all for today. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have question. Ah, uh, what did you say? What did she? Do you get the recording after we finish? Do they come to you or no? No, I just get your email. Okay, I will make sure that you upload your recording. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. And I just can I'll uh, listen to you next time. Yes, thank you. <laughs>